Please pray with me. May these words that I speak be grounded in my soul, encouraged by the God presence in me. And may these words that you hear be captured by your soul, enlivened by the God presence in you. Amen. <coughs> Let us go to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. Proclaim the message there also. I wonder why we have paid infinitely more attention to the miraculous healings than to Jesus' response. The only words he utters in this entire story, proclaim the message. It seems to me that, as with so many of the stories of Jesus, we have defaulted to the miracle. Walking on water, quelling storms, curing diseases, ending physical blindness and deafness, to name just a few. We have given to Jesus the power of the gods and have literalized the stories, even though that was never, ever the original intent. In so doing, we have set Jesus apart and above, and, and we've stripped him of his humanness. And the outcome for me of this is that Christians, including us, have abdicated, have abdicated our call to live like him, to love like him, and to heal like him. You see, in reality, the Gospels were written to proclaim Jesus as the very human Messiah, as envisioned by the prophets, who would usher in the kingdom of God. The Gospels were not written to proclaim a divine God who would single-handedly save the world. Bishop John Shelby Spong writes about this in his book, Jesus for the Non-Religious. He says, each of these so-called miraculous accounts of Jesus' healing are stories designed not to relate to a supernatural event, but to focus the ongoing debate on the identity of Jesus. By reading them literally, we have in effect blinded countless generations of Christians from understanding the real meaning of these stories. Signs of the inbreaking kingdom of God are attached to the life of Jesus, who was said to embody that kingdom, to embody it by opening the eyes of the blind and restoring health to those who were ill, so that they might see and embrace their own deepest identity. He uh, concludes by saying, it is in our humanity that we claim to reveal the presence of the Holy God. And I would add, just like Jesus, it is in our humanity that we can claim to reveal the presence of the Holy God. Let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. And the message? Love is the way. And love is the way heals. I was in Vancouver, well, actually I was in Surrey this past week as part of the interview teams for folks preparing to become ministers in the United Church of Canada. Most of the folks we interviewed were in their final interviews preparing for ordination or commissioning this May at BC Conference. In every interview I heard the same things. I believe. I believe, I believe. Over and over again, I experienced these new ministers in waiting as excited to expose the new liturgies they were creating or excited to defend the old liturgies they were perpetuating. They talked eloquently about what God is and who Jesus was and how the Spirit is at work. And over and over and over again, it seemed to me that love was more platitude than reality. 
that beliefs were the foundation of their vocation, while in the words of Richard Gore, love waited patiently out in the hallway, hoping to be invited in. I must admit, I am becoming more and more perplexed as to why we cannot or will not make love the center of our lives, the center of our communities, and God help us, the center of our world. Brian McLaren offers these words in his new book, The Great Spiritual Migration. He says, of the many radical things said and done by Jesus, his unflinching emphasis on love was the most radical of all. Love was the greatest commandment, he said. It was his new commandment, his prime directive, love for God, for self, for neighbor, for stranger, for alien, for outsider, for outcast, and even for enemy, as he himself modeled. He says, the new commandment of love meant that neither beliefs nor words, neither taboos, systems, structures, nor the labels that enshrine them mattered most. Love decentered everything. Love relativized everything. Love took priority over everything else. Everything. Jesus and the stories written about him are challenging us to look deeper than miracle, deeper than divinity, to the very human context in which he lived and calls every other human to live as well. Spong further writes, this human being was seen as acting out the messianic role of the mythological son of man. He opened people's eyes and their hearts to see what life could be. That is the power of the Jesus experience. We need not pretend that we believe the supernaturally unbelievable in order to be Jesus' disciples. We need only see all that life can be. And in the ability of the human Jesus to open our eyes to this vision, a new sense of what it means to be divine begins to emerge. Let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. And what was the message? I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my children, you'll be. Love heals. Jesus knew that and modeled that. And just like Jesus, when we open our own lives to love, when love becomes our prime directive, we too have the power to heal. <laughs>